We'll just set this to zero on the, on the scales here. So 0, 0.00 grams. Now I'm going to open the tap and we'll see how much the air weighs inside here. Now the air is rushing in, you might be able to hear it. And the scales now say two, about two and a half grams. So there's two and a half grams of air inside this flask. This video, I want to talk to you guys about the buoyancy of cylinders. Now, I have two cylinders here in front of me, and one of them, the one with the cap on, is full. This one is empty. They're both aluminum cylinders, and the reason why I want to talk to you about these cylinders today is because one of the things that happens when you go diving is you're going to be consuming the gas that's inside your cylinder. So at the beginning of the dive, because you have a full cylinder, you're going to be a little bit negative, which means you're going to be sinking a little bit. And towards the end of the dive, what's going to happen is because you've consumed the air that's inside that cylinder or the gas that you're breathing, you're going to tend to float a little bit. And I just wanted to illustrate so you see what that difference is in buoyancy, you know, with two cylinders. So I have a full tank or full cylinder here and I have an empty one. And all I'm going to do is put them in the water just so you can see. Empty cylinders float, full cylinders are going to sink. So if I take my empty cylinder here and I put it inside the water, what you're going to see here is my empty cylinder is actually going to float. So I'm going to put this in the water real quick here. It'll take a moment, but you're going to see that the cylinder comes right back to the surface. And it's actually at the reserve pressure right now. So it's at about 500 PSI, which would be reserved for us here in the United States. Now, if I take my full cylinder and I put it in the water, what's going to happen is as soon as I let it go, I'm going to have to go back in the water and get it, but you're going to see it's just going to sink right to the bottom. So the resolution of this scale is one gram. So let's turn on the vacuum chamber and see if it starts dropping in weight. Okay, seeing if a vacuum chamber weighs less with no air in it. It's now at 3,423 grams. So I'm going to zero it right here. Okay, it's now at zero grams, so we'll be able to tell if it goes into the negative now. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. You can easily tell. Look at it just start dropping in weight. I did not expect it to show up that vividly. We're at half an atmosphere, it's already lost 24 grams. <laughs> That's cool. So you notice right off the bat, it loses most of the weight, but now it's slowing down. We're at 0.2 atmospheres. Okay, we're at 0.1 atmospheres. We've lost 25 grams. Okay, so we're at a full vacuum now and it stayed at minus 25 grams. Oh, minus 25 grams, I'm gonna open it. Three, two, one. Oh, there it goes. Wow, <laughs> back to zero grams. That's awesome. <laughs> so what's cool about this is the main portion of weight lost. Oakley says over and over again that space is fake. Because if space existed, then all the air on Earth would expand into the void of space, thus adhering to the second law of thermodynamics. We know that air pressure is a gradient getting lower and lower as we increase in altitude, just like this graph. And we know that the atmosphere is blue because the blue wavelengths are scattered, so as the amount of blue gets less and less, the more black it gets. Less air particles means less pressure like we see here from the vantage of a high altitude balloon. Notice the sun is in the black area. We know most of the blue area ends at about 30 kilometers, with the rest stretching out to 38 kilometers, and 0.0003% reaching 100 kilometers or 62 miles. Yes, this pressure is measured, and the evidence is visible by the thin layer of blue atmosphere getting less and less blue until it's just black. Why is that area black? because there are practically no air particles to scatter the blue wavelengths of light. So, Oakley, 
We can see that the black area, which is pretty much a vacuum as we describe a vacuum on Earth, meaning a space with very low pressure and therefore very few particles of air. Where is the container? Why is the air in the blue area not rushing to fill the vast black area like you said it would? Why are you lying to your followers, Oakley? Why can't these objects be in the black area? If they are flying in the blue area, how do they get fuel? Remember this flat side, the moon amongst the clouds? Oh look, the moon in the black vacuum area. Look, Oakley, the moon way up there and no container. What's happening with the second law of thermodynamics? All that atmosphere we breathe is not rushing into the vast vacuum. Why did you lie to your followers, Oakley, and tell them that the second law of thermodynamics will make the air we breathe rush into any vacuum if it existed? Look, Oakley, the moon way up there and no container. What's happening with the second law of thermodynamics? All the atmosphere we breathe is not rushing into that vast vacuum. Why did you lie to your followers, Oakley, and tell them the second law of thermodynamics will make the air we breathe rush into the vacuum if it existed? Right there is a vacuum, Oakley. The air is not rushing into it like you said it would. You lied when you said space is fake, Oakley. We know that high pressure moves to low pressure. For example, wind. So we have high pressure down here. Why isn't it moving to the low pressure up there, Oakley? Yeah, it's got nothing to do with an actual container, has it? What it has got to do with is a thing known as gravity. Science is cool. Thanks for watching.